Yeah, hello, traders. This is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. A lot of potential themes we can cover for the weekend strategy video. Uh, certainly the uh, unfolding situation in Turkey is a high-profile one. But I want to focus on a particular currency, uh, and this is one that we've actually come back to a number of times before. But I think that there, this is the center point for a lot of fundamental themes that are currently uh, playing out. And that includes uh, a sensitivity to risk trends, which Turkey relates to uh, the general state of uh, risk appetite and I, I believe a certain level of complacency that uh, puts us in a very risky position but it also is indicative of monetary policy which is growing to greater and greater extremes especially when you're seeing change from the Bank of Japan obviously a, a quite a large one uh, the ECB they're coming to uh, points where we just don't see the meaningful impact that they are really looking for and you have other countries like the UK with the Bank of England uh, potentially following suit and going down a very uh, bleak hallway in terms of activating more accommodative monetary policy when uh, some of its major counterparts haven't been too successful in their most recent iterations. Now, Japan has even further interest to me and the Japanese yen because we are with the recent election uh, that found strong support for uh, Prime Minister Abe seeing a uh, rising interest in using fiscal stimulus, which uh, many central bankers around the world, amongst major central banks, are stating that uh, monetary policy is potentially reaching the extremes of its capable uh, limitations. And subsequently, they need uh, uh, fiscal spending to fill the gap and structural reforms to really make lasting change. So this is, once again, very much in the center of all of this. So we're going to have to watch the Japanese yen. Uh, now, in terms of what we're seeing from the Japanese yen now, it's not going to be particularly easy uh, to separate what is actually driving the market. Now, if we were talking about just, a, let's say, a couple months ago, actually, just a month ago, it would be certainly not a stretch to suggest that we have a combination of effects here, uh, one being risk aversion. However, when we look at some of the more high-profile measures of risk appetite trends like U.S. equities, which have uh, recently charged to a record high, uh, or some of those other risk-oriented assets, they don't necessarily support that there has been a very meaningful risk-oriented uh, advance or, uh, or risk aversion. That would support a pull down in the dollar yen. In fact, I showed not too long ago the correlation between uh, the dollar yen and the yen crosses versus the carry trade. This is the orange line that you see here, which is actually not uh, significantly lower. There is a considerable disparity between the major yen crosses and this carry trade, which is a reinvestment of carry as well as the capital gains that these underlying instruments represent. So we do have a risk element here, but one of the uh, primary drivers, at least in my view, for the Japanese yen to the downside, and this is this is pretty universal, uh, CAD yen, Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, all uh, yen crosses this past week that I've uh, shown greater interest in, as well as obviously the dollar yen, uh, the euro yen, and the pound yen, all of these have seen that consistent decline. So if it isn't risk aversion, a committed risk aversion. What is it that is driving the yen crosses lower? I think that this is more a reference to the loss of traction from the Bank of Japan's efforts to devalue its currency. They have been one of the most aggressive uh, accommodative policy pushers uh, that we've seen over the past five years. Now, the Fed arguably was the full-scale uh, as quickly as possible uh, candidate in all of this, but they also started to back off, especially with the QE3 taper. In the absence of the Fed's presence, uh, and uh, also Japan and others were actually taking considerable advantage of the uh, relative calm that the Fed's efforts were uh, giving to the rest of the world, their absence is felt substantially. They tried to fill in the gap 
Now, this effort was, and there's the Fed's balance sheet uh, growth, and uh, as well as its uh, taper that you can see there. All right, this is the rate of change of the Fed's balance sheet in the S&P 500. Quite clearly, also started to stall when the taper uh, started to uh, completely uh, take off the growth in that Fed balance sheet. But we also have here global monetary policy. So in the absence of the Fed's efforts, the Bank of Japan and the ECB, the People's Bank of China, uh, all tried to step in and take over that influence, but they really weren't uh, proving capable of the task. Now, knowing that the major efforts from the other central banks was falling short of the, of the mark, you had uh, at that point a very remarkable uh, move from the yen crosses. Let's bump this up to a weekly chart. The yen crosses, and we're just using the dollar yen here as our guideline, had rallied substantially. The yen depreciated substantially. And that was in large part in the anticipation of the Bank of Japan uh, seeing success, not necessarily economic success, but success in devaluing its currency and pumping up its capital markets. You can see here the red lines, faint perhaps, uh, the efforts by the Bank of Japan to actually increase uh, its support. So back on April 4, 2013, we had the introduction of the QQE program. The uh, policy authorities, both Abe, uh, the Prime Minister, as well as Kuroda, the Bank of Japan uh, governor, were very vocal that this was coming, and it was very effective in devaluing the currency. Then we got the upgrade back in October of 2014, and things started to fall apart in terms of confidence as we had that extended period of consolidation. It was, I think, the introduction of negative rates uh, back in January, January 29th of this year, that we saw confidence really fall apart. That's because there was a one day of yen decline. Remember, this is dollar yen, so the yen declines are rise uh, for the dollar yen. One day of yen depreciation, and then subsequently the currency rallies. So what this ended up being was a line in the sand that once crossed it said that there was no uh, recourse from the market perspective that they're going to have a capability of keeping this currency down. So what happened? We started to retrace uh, some of this exorbitant discount. All right? It was excessive. The yen's depreciation on the basis of the Bank of Japan being successful in keeping its currency down and perhaps pushing it for, uh, further eroded. Now we've come off quite a bit from the yen crosses. The question now becomes, is this fair value? Is this fair value for what the, the Bank of Japan is capable of doing? Is this fair value uh, for what they might do into the, in the future versus what they're doing now? Is this fair value from a risk perspective? And that is not particularly clear, especially after this past week uh, in the aftermath of the elections, uh, we saw the Prime Minister suggest that they would actually increase their fiscal stimulus. No details yet, but uh, that is a considerable promise, a considerable vow. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily aimed uh, at the exchange rate. Uh, fiscal stimulus, if that were uh, aimed at the exchange rate, it would carry with it severe consequences from trade partners. But it's going to be expected that the Bank of Japan is going to do something along the lines of matching uh, the local economic effort in, 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 in an endeavor to try to devalue the currency to improve trade as well. So now we have certainly still some degree of premium in the in the uh, bearish view of the yen. All right, this has been pushed very far. It can certainly continue to unwind as confidence in the Bank of Japan's capabilities uh, fades, but that's going to be certainly questioned uh, with. Abe uh, ready to enact fiscal stimulus and most likely expecting monetary policy support to come uh, to back it up. So this is a conflicting fundamental theme. Also conflicting is the risk view. 
All right, when we look at something like the S&P 500, we see it at record highs. This is pushing sentiment higher. And we can see that across most uh, risk-oriented markets. They are higher over the past three to four months. Now, of course, the yen crosses have really uh, struggled to keep pace. In fact, they only recently have shown any kind of uh, appetite for rising. So this actually uh, sets it at kind of a bias where we see that it is not particularly uh, sensitive to risk on, but it is certainly very sensitive to risk off. All right. It's important to recognize that asymmetry uh, in terms of correlation because if it's really reticent to go on a risk appetite move and uh, if you've seen any of my trade videos or a number of my, my strategy videos, you know my sentiments about the uh, depth and the robustness of uh, the sentiment that we see in things like the S&P 500 I think is dubious at best. But if you have a material turn in sentiment, and that is uh, unquestioned, uh, so we actually see a drop in uh, these risk-oriented assets, which could be uh, motivated by uh, fallout from European banks, particularly Italian banks, uh, falling on hard times. That can be a fallout of Chinese uncertainty. That can be a fallout of this Turkish situation. It can be motivated by any number of issues, but really what is the uh, problem for sentiment and risk appetite is the market conditions, not the catalyst. The catalyst is just uh, the spark that, that pushes over the first domino. All right, But that catalyst, if we see it, if we see the sentiment shift, that can readily change the views on these yen crosses. In the event of a committed risk trend, which I very I find very difficult to believe that there's going to be a really committed, really expansive risk on view, uh, but it is certainly much more probable uh, and capable if there is motivated an, an overall risk aversion that the dollar yen and yen crosses would likely conform to that view. In its absence, or perhaps in the maintenance of risk, uh, uh, risk on uh, as uh, modest as it may be, we're going to get the market uh, conflicted and really evaluating what stimulus is coming from the government, what the Bank of Japan may intend to do at its next meeting, and that's going to create for some very difficult trading. So now we have two conflicting views, whereas previously they were two complementary views. Sentiment with a bias, but also monetary policy, once again, with the bias, doubt. Now that monetary pol policy bias is uneven, is dynamic, it's dynamic, it's, uh, it moves with what the headlines may suggest. Risk trends still have a bias. All right, but we need to see that motivation, that uh, actual commitment. Otherwise, this is going to be pretty difficult trading. So this past week, I've been watching dollar yen. We've seen a nice bounce here. We'll see if that actually can hold at that uh, big picture 38.2 fib. That is the 38.2 uh, fib of the low that we had prior to the QQE uh, announcement, or when the QQE 3 started to really hit the headlines. And this is the high that we've had since the era of quantitative easing in Japan. So 38.2 Fib is right up here at 106.50, 106.75. And the midpoint is down at 100 in 0.65. So a considerable range, technical boundaries to keep uh, track of. I've also laid out uh, Euro Yen, Pound Yen, although their respective views have been uh, skewed somewhat because of the European event risk. I am still particularly interested in these uh, commodity-based yen crosses. Aussie yen has good technical and uh, fundamental precedence, a greater intensity to the risk sensitivity, of course. CAD yen is the same. Kiwi yen has been of the greatest interest. However, I've been very reticent to go into it because I haven't really seen a commitment and risk aversion. And it seems the Turkish news, certainly into the close of the Friday session, started to really motivate it in that sentiment theme. But as we concentrate on these big picture fundamental themes, the competing fundamental themes in many cases, whether it be 
an orientation of risk trends, a view of monetary policy, the effectiveness of monetary policy, how governments are starting to or uh, starting to support or withdraw from the economic and financial influence. All of this is giving different direction, different drive to a variety of assets and currencies, but for the yen, it all coalesces. All right, so this is once again a, a, a crucial currency to keep track of if you want to have a better, a, a better view of the entire financial system. We'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next strategy video next week. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend.